5.4 B periodic trends, uh, Tuesday, December 17th. This is part two of lesson four in unit five periodic table. Periodic properties explain why francium is more likely to explode than sodium is, and this all depends on what happens with protons and electrons, and this all has to do with periodic trends. Let's first talk about an explanation for periodic trends. All periodic trends depend on two things, the number of protons and the number of electron shells. But since the number of protons increases both going down a group and across a period, only focus on the number of electron shells. Okay? Uh, how the electron shells change determines which properties increase and which properties decrease. Now, going down a group, we'll see that there are more protons since the atomic number increases and more electron shells because um, the number of numbers in the electron configuration increases as you see here. All right, and because there are more electron shells with an increase in period number, there is um, less attraction um, of electrons to the nucleus since electrons are further away and the atom is bigger. Um, because the electrons are further away, therefore it's also easier to pull them off of the atom since they're not pulled in as much by the protons in the nucleus as when they're smaller and closer to the nucleus. So an example is shown for uh, group 2 with B, E, M, G, C, A, S, R, and B, A. Now B, E has two electron shells since the configuration is 2-2. M, G has three since it's 2-8-2. CA has 4 since it's 2 8 8 2. SR has 5 since it's 2 8 18 8 2. And BA has 6 since it's 2 8 18 18 8 2. And since um, BE has 2 electron shells and BA has 6 electron shells down here, this has 2 and this has 6. Um, uh, the number of shells actually increases going down the group. And since electrons are further away from the nucleus and there are more shells as a result, they are less attracted and they're actually easier to pull off because they're not pulled in as much. All right? Now, um, left to right across a period, if we go across the period like this, um, there are more protons because the atomic number also increases here, but you have the same number of electron shells because of the number of num because uh sorry because the number of numbers in the configuration stays the same we'll see that in a minute but because there are more protons there is more attraction of electrons to the nucleus since there are more protons pulling in the from the nucleus uh, on the electrons and that makes the atom shrink or makes the atom smaller and because the electrons are attracted closer to the nucleus, because there are more protons, it's more difficult to pull them off of the actual atom. An example is shown for uh, a period with K, C, A, S, C, T, I, and V. So K, C, A, S, C, uh, T, I, and V, if you look at the number of numbers in their electron configurations, they all have four electron shells, or four numbers in their configurations. Now, uh, the number of electron shells are the same, but the number of protons increases going left to right. From 19 for K since the atomic number is 19, to 23 for V. All right, since there are more protons going left to right, even though all five of these elements are at the same energy level of four, the electrons are attracted more and are harder to pull off. And you can think about this as the reason being that the atomic number increases. So there are more protons. And since the number of energy levels is the same, the only thing that changes is how much attraction there is. So same number of energy levels, but um, more protons means greater pull on the electrons, making the size shrink and making it much harder to pull off the electrons off of the atom. Let's talk about periodic trends very specifically now. Periodic trends were um, all explained in part A, the previous slide. 
Now, to remember which periodic properties increase down a group and across a period, we need to remember two phrases. All right, for properties increasing down a group, um, just remember Greta ate instant meals. GR in Greta stands for group. A in, sorry, AT in 8 stands for atomic radius. I in instant stands for ionic radius, and M in meals stands for metallic character. Now, um, atomic and ionic radii uh, both increase going down a group because electrons get further and further away from the nucleus as you add more and more energy levels. So, obviously, the size gets bigger the further and further you go out. Now, metallic character also increases because the electrons are easier to pull off when they're further away. Think of it as a black hole. They're not being pulled in as much. And since you can pull off or lose electrons, and we already know that metals lose electrons, the metallic character increases because the character of metals is for them to lose electrons. So since you're further away and further away from being pulled into the nucleus, um, we know that metals can lose electrons. All right? Now, for properties increasing across a period, remember Peter is eating nachos. P-E and Peter stands for um, period. I in is stands for ionization energy. E in eating stands for electronegativity. And N in nacho stands for non-metallic character. Now, electronegativity increases going across the period because there's more attraction to the nucleus. And that's because um, you've got more protons pulling on the same number of energy levels. So obviously, they're going to be pulled in and attracted more. Ionization energy and non-metallic character, on the other hand, increase across the period because it's harder to pull off valence electrons when they're obviously uh, attracted closer to the nucleus. So it's much harder to pull off. So the non-metallic character increases, and so does the ionization energy because it takes more energy when they're pulled in much more strongly. Now let's talk about a shortcut to periodic trends. To do this, just use table S. And to analyze trends in order of increasing atomic number, do the following. You first have to pick the first and last element in the period or group. Then you have to see what happens to a specific property between these two elements. In other words, does that property increase or decrease? More specifically, to compare electronegativity, ionization energy, and atomic radius, use table S to compare these three properties. So let's try this with a period involving um, Na, Mg, Al, Si, Ps, and Cl. Step one, we pick the first element, Na, and the last element, Cl, in the period. Step two, we have to see what happens between these two elements um, in terms of electronegativity, ionization energy, and atomic radius. So you have to analyze trends or changes in electronegativity, ionization energy, and atomic radius. For Na, uh, ionization energy is 496 kilojoules per mole. Electronegativity is 0.9, and atomic radius is 160 p.m. However, for Cl, ionization energy is 1251 or 1251 kJ per mole. Uh, electronegativity is 3.2, and atomic radius is 100. From these changes, we can actually see that ionization energy um, and electronegativity actually um, increase across the period, 496 to 1251 and 0.9 to 3.2. So again, we see that ionization energy and electronegativity increase across the period in terms of their values, while the atomic radius decreases across the period in terms of their values. All right, so it decreases from 160 to 100 across the period. So based on these changes shown in the data for table S, um, you see that, again, ionization energy and electronegativity increase across the period, while atomic radius decreases ap uh, across the period based on the changes in data shown here. You can also do the same thing with groups, but here I showed it for uh, doing it with a period going across from left to right. Now let's try an example problem using what we know, example problem one. Question one, we have to uh, list three elements in a group in order of increasing atomic radius. So if we actually look at the um, at a group, let's see what we can find here. Um, 
Here we can pick out the following elements, C, S, I, and G, E. So for uh, C, we have two energy levels if you look. S, I has three, and G, E has four energy levels since the number of numbers in the electron configuration increases. Two here, three energy levels here since you have three numbers, four energy levels here since you have four numbers. So now um, we see that we have more electron shells, so it's further away from the nucleus, and therefore it has a larger atomic radius because it's getting bigger and bigger and further and further away. Now, number two, we had to figure out which one has the greatest attraction for electrons in a chemical bond um, out of these four elements. If we look, Te out of these four elements is actually furthest to the right. All right? So um, furthest to the right equals you have more protons going from left to right, even though you have the same number of shells. So that means that you have the most attraction. Uh, or the greatest electronegativity, in other words. You can also check the electronegativities using table S. And if you check table S, T has a higher electronegativity than all of the other atoms. Part three, um, I'm not going to show you the periodic table for this. You can just check it on your own. But CL is the furthest to the right and the furthest up on the periodic table. So therefore, it has the most protons and the least number of shells. Because it's furthest up means the least number of shells. Most protons means the furthest to the right, usually. Therefore, since you have the most protons and the least number of shells, it's small and it's being pulled in, so you have the most attraction. And that means the most energy needed to remove valence electrons out of the form. You can also check the ionization energies using table S, and you'll find out if you use table S that CL is the highest ionization energy of these four. Question four, um, when we're considering um, elements from left to right in period four, We'll see the ionization energy and electronegativity increase because the more protons you have and the same number of shells, you'll see more attraction going from left to right because the number of protons increases, thereby increasing the attraction for electrons. Uh, question five, ionic radius, atomic radius, and metallic character increase going down a group because you have more and more electron shells or the more and more numbers in the electron configuration. So that means it's further away from the nucleus so that means the sizes or the radii get bigger, and um, it's also easier to remove electrons from the valence shell since they're further away and they're not being pulled in as much. Therefore, the metallic character um, increases as well. So, uh, example problem two, we have to find out which of the following ions has the smallest radius. In order to find the smallest radius, you have to always go furthest up and furthest to the right. Because up means you have less energy levels, so that means it's good. And furthest to the right means you have more attractions. So based on this, we'll see that Cl minus has the smallest radius because it's furthest up and furthest to the right. So that means since you're furthest up, you have the least number of electron shells. And further to the right means you have the most attraction because you have the greater number of protons going to the right. So the no greater number of protons you have and the less electron shells you have, you have um, the more attraction you have, and therefore the electrons are pulled in closer. Number two, you have to explain why um, the atomic radius of chlorine is smaller than that of bromine. Well, chlorine or Cl has electron shells that are much less than that of bromine. So again, Cl has less electron shells than bromine, so it is closer and more attracted to the nucleus than Br is. All right, so it's much closer because it has less electron shells. So obviously, the atomic radius or the size of the atom will get much smaller because it's closer to the nucleus, so it's much more tight and small. Number three, we had to explain the relationship between atomic number and the first ionization energy as elements in group one are considered in order of increasing atomic number. So the ionization energy um, actually decreases going down group one as atomic number increases. And this is because the more electron shells you have, the further away it is from the nucleus. So that means you're further away from the nucleus, so it's much easier for you to pull off the electrons. So that means less energy is required to remove electrons from the atommost shell. All right, so less energy is required because you're further away, so you don't have to pull as hard to get them out of the atom. You can also check the ionization energies of the first metal in group 1, Li, and the last element in group 1, Fr. Just try this with group 1. Li has a first ionization energy of 520 um, kJ per mole based on table S, while Fr has a first ionization energy of 393 kJ per mole. Therefore, since the number decreased between Li and Fr, we can conclude ionization energy decreases going down the group. Finally, I'd like for you to try this on your own for homework and bring it in for Tuesday, December 17th. Thank you very much.